My mom's affair partner tried to break into our house after I kicked him out. Now she's begging for forgiveness. I'm male 20. My dad, male 45, serves in the U.S. military and we've often shifted around a lot as a family. We'd be moved around a lot and usually stay near army bases, but I have always been proud of my dad's work and have made the best of our family setup. Obviously, it was hectic to move so often and I grew up like your classic military brat. I make friends easily and don't really have a hometown of any kind. My mom, female 43, however, has trouble with the lifestyle that comes with the military and really wants a place to settle down. About four years ago, she gave an ultimatum to dad where she claimed that she's done with moving around and wanted a place to settle down. They talked it out and decided that a relationship where they would meet infrequently but with a solid home would be best for my mom. With that, my parents bought a nice house near Milwaukee, my mom's home city and I chose to stay with her while I attended college in Marquette. So basically for the last four years I've seen my dad maybe once or twice. Um, so that's even tougher to get in touch with him in the past couple of years as he was stationed overseas. It hurts my heart to say this, but I took on other things, and it's a large part of why a rift was created between us. Obviously I loved him, but it just wasn't the same as when dad used to come back home more often. Often, I got a lot closer to my mom, but some things about her kind of irked me as I grew up in Wisconsin. Like she used to badmouth dad a little bit and blame him for losing the best years of her life. At least when we were sitting together for dinner, I used to just calmly tell her that dad was making sacrifices for us too, but she wasn't open to listening. Later on, she started talking about how empty the house felt after I moved into a dorm for college. This is where things went downhill. One time I was back from my spring break and my mom casually brought up the topic of bringing in her friend to stay at the house. It's been so quiet ever since you moved out. My friend Jake just moved here. He's been a bit down on his luck and just got out of a messy divorce. I was thinking of letting him stay here just for a few months until he gets back on his feet. At the time I agreed to this idea because Engel the house was huge and mom was there all alone. Sure her family and friends did stay in Milwaukee, but they usually couldn't come all the way out to visit or were sometimes too busy. Having an old friend around might have been good for her. I was a little cautious of letting the dude stay here rent-free and take advantage of the situation, but she vouched for her friend. Mom told me that Dad was also on board with the idea, and I took her word for it. So in a few short weeks, her friend Jake moved into the house. While I was there for the remainder of spring break, everything seemed fine, and the guy seemed like a decent enough person, but he's been staying at the house for almost two years now. And I cringe to even think about this, but I'm suspicious of his relationship with my mom. Here's the thing, during one of the rare times I could call dad and talk to him about everything that was going on, I did say something like, hey, it's good that mom has a friend to catch up with now, right? And he agreed saying John was a mutual buddy of theirs, but he didn't see the overly close nature of their relationship that I could on video calls and visits to the house. It was obvious something was going on. I just didn't have any proof and to be honest I thought I was overthinking. It took a completely different event in order to get the truth out in front of everyone. What happened was I visited my mom after my exams ended and she said she had a surprise for me. That's when she told me that Jake had been working on a novel of his own, but working from cafes where the confines of the guest bedroom was hampering his creative flow. She had already remodeled my room without ever telling me and had moved all my stuff into the basement in a bunch of cardboard boxes. My trading cards, posters, everything that I owned. She'd even thrown away a few things she deemed unnecessary without asking me. And I snapped and said, why did you do all of this for just some dude? What the hell is going on? And mom responded by saying, Jake is more than just some dude OP. He's been here while you've been in college and your dad's never here. It's the least I can do for him. I was certain that nobody would go so far for a simple friend and I needed to confirm my suspicions. I asked my buddy in the neighborhood to keep a close eye on my house after I left, and he told me that Jake and my mom had been going out together, and once they came back late, at night, a little drunk, and kissed on the porch. He could see mom chiding him for it, and looking around before they went inside. That was enough for me to lose the little faith I had left in my mom, and I contacted my dad as soon as I could. I told him about everything, and he was silent for a while. Then he told me that he was going to fix things and asked me to go to the house next week. A couple of days after the call, I got a long emotional call telling me that dad had filed for divorce, and she spun a sob story about falling apart since I don't think she thought I knew about her infidelity, and I nodded along. I was going to have to take care of the house until dad could arrange to leave and come back to Milwaukee. I settled in and dealt with the drama of the divorce. Phone calls from relatives, friends, yada yada. However, where I may be tea, 
A comes in now. After I moved into the house, I took all my stuff back up to my room and threw away everything Jake had left behind. Then I set it up exactly as it was or as close as I could get and posted a picture with the caption, it's good to be back. And I guess it rubbed my mom the wrong way. She wants me to believe that despite all her problems that I should still give her respect and not do something petty like this just cause. I didn't even consider her point of view because I mean she's the one who cheated but as emotions have become less charged I feel like I should have just been the bigger man in this scenario. Dad is coming back tomorrow but something really concerning happened recently. I got home from work one day to find Jake waiting at the door. He didn't want much to say to me, but told me that the sudden eviction had left him out of the loop and he needed a place to stay. He asked if I would be okay with letting him stay in the guest bedroom for a few nights with my mom until they found proper accommodation. So I laughed in his face and told him to get the frick out, but he said that he wasn't asking. So later on I heard him and a few people outside the door threatening me to open it and come outside and I immediately grabbed my gun and hollered at them from the window. That was enough to scare them away, but I've called the cops and reported what happened. Dad is also aware of the situation, and he's pissed. The house doesn't feel very safe right now, and when I call mom to tell her what her affair partner had done, she didn't pick up my call. I know she's a terrible person, but I'm a little worried for her too. I'm going to ask around and see what's happening. Update 2. It's a lot worse than I imagined. Jake as a person is a little troubled and the eviction ended up making him have a fight with mom, which spiraled into him, showing up outside my door. Mom picked up my call later that day and told me she'd broken things off with Jake and wanted a second chance with dad. So by this time dad had gotten back home and he overheard the call. He took the phone from me and calmly said, babe, not a chance in hell. With that he handed the phone back and I heard mom crying about the whole situation again. Uncle I don't really feel much sympathy for her. I mean, if she didn't want a life like this, I would have even respected her divorcing dad and dating. But cheating is just disgusting. When she calmed down, I told her what Jake had done, and she had no idea he had come to my house. She told me that after the breakup she was staying with her sister and Jake had been blowing up her phone, but she had no idea what he'd really been doing. I was also confused as to who the other people with Jake were, and to be honest, it seems like it's going to be a mystery. However, with my dad back, I feel a lot safer. Him and I had a deep talk about everything that's happened, and he's respectable enough to not badmouth mom to me. He just said that he has his morals and mom is not the partner he wants in his life, and I totally get that. The divorce isn't going to be too contentious, and since I'm not a kid, there won't be any reason to fight for custody either. So my dad used some of his contacts in the police force to find out where Jake was, and we found him drunk out of his mind in a sleazy bar near the highway. He was brought in for an attempted break-in, and it turns out that he had hired local goons to help him break into the house. So what he thought he would achieve after that I shudder to think. Thankfully I had managed to scare them off. He confessed, and has been in a weirdly depressive state after that. Jake will still be going to jail for a long time and he claims that mom seduced him and ruined his life. Big whoop from me, I don't care what happened. I want to punch this dude every time I see him. Mom sure didn't force him to try and break into my house. Anyways, we're all good now. Dad is going to be staying with me in the house for a couple of months and then probably move to a local posting or figure out something else like that. I'm a little shaken after everything that's happened, but to be honest, my original Ata question has gotten blown out of the water by what Jake did. Tenta, she didn't take consent to change the room and there's definitely something says going on between Jake and your mom. Ta, she's a cheater and also a terrible mom. Eat it. Just read the update. Glad you're safe OP, but this is just insane. Good on you for checking in on your mom. I feared that she would also be a part of this nut jobs plan. Is jobs and shoplin plan. That would have just been really heartbreaking for you. Next story. I have two nephews, John 25 and Finn 15. I love both dearly, but John is a bit difficult to be around. He still acts like a child and is incredibly mean to his younger brother. I'm putting it lightly actually he's terrible to Finn. My sister doesn't say anything because he has autism but will instead spoil Finn to make up for the bullying. It's a really weird situation that I didn't pick up on until very recently after I moved closer to them. My sister, brother-in-law and nephews came over for dinner the other day. It was going well when all of a sudden my daughter 18 told me she didn't find her very expensive necklace. I had assumed she had misplaced it and assured her I'd help her find it later, but then I noticed that Finn looked extremely nervous. I took him aside and asked him if he was all right. He ended up admitting that he had stolen her necklace. He busted into tears saying that he was really sorry he didn't want to and John made him do it. He was bordering on a panic attack. 
I called my sister over and told her what happened. I then asked her what she was going to do about this, and she said, What am I supposed to do? I can't control them and they're old enough to figure things out on their own. So I said, So you're completely fine with John bullying Finn. It doesn't bother you at all. She said that it does bother me, so I asked why she didn't do anything about it then. I straight up told her that I didn't want to hear any of her bullshit excuses. She asked me what I meant by that, so I told her your excuses are pathetic. John has autism. Boys will be boys. I'm scared. Finn needs to learn to stand up for himself, etc. etc. I told her that these are all bullshit and that she's setting both kids up for failure. She started bawling and calling me a heartless, judgmental bitch who won't understand. She then left, leaving her husband and kids. I told her husband what happened and he just sighed. My mom then called me later saying that I should be kinder to my sister. I told her I was just telling the truth. My mom then said that I was acting like one of those annoying. I was only being honest to holes. A-I-T-A-N-T-A. I had to check John's age twice. He's 25. He's an adult, so autism isn't an excuse for bullying even if he were a kid. Honestly ask Finn if the day he turns 16 he wants to move into your home and be part of your family and get away from an older brother who torments him and a mother who doesn't care to help him. I feel sorry for your sister who if she says she's afraid is likely also getting bullied by John. But she is an adult. She needs to figure this out herself. Finn's the one who needs rescuing. N.T.A. Your sister is an enabler and judging by her husband's reaction, he's sick and tired of trying to change it. I would just not have them over to my house if they're going to have drama and steal my child's stuff if I were you. N.T.A. I'm 53, autistic and I was the bullied child. Mom needs to get her sons into therapy. John onto medication and start practicing tough love. All you did was hit an exposed nerve and mom is covering up for her. Perhaps you could have been a tad more delicate in your comments, but it needed to be said. Both kids can still have good lives if their parents act. Next story. For anonymity I'm using a throwaway and not mentioning country names. I, 25, female, moved out of the country I grew up in seven years ago for college. A lot has happened since then, and it's not relevant to the post. But long story short I have no family left in my home country. So I chose to acquire dual citizenship and stay where I now live. Recently I reconnected with my childhood friends and I was really happy to reunite and catch up. They can't all come over to me because it's super expensive for three people to pay for a flight and accommodation. One of them, B, 26, female, is married and she and her husband have a big home and usually invite the other two for weekends over vacations. So she suggested they have me over this time for their early January vacation for two weeks. My job allows me to work from anywhere as long as I have my tablet and stylus so it wouldn't inconvenience me if I was away for two weeks. The others took time off work, I think. The vacation was great for the most part, and they were all kind to me, despite all the years apart. B's husband was welcoming, but that's the conflict came in. Whenever I took some time to myself to work a little, he would be there making small talk and joking around. Sometimes he would tell me things about himself and then say he doesn't feel like he has anyone to share these things with. I have no problem with being a confidant of some sort, but I believe a husband shouldn't be spending too much alone time with his wife's friend, no matter the reason. I told him this when it got too uncomfortable, and I explained my reasons. That's when he got really inappropriate and tried to shoot his shot. I freaked out and told him something along the lines of B is a great woman I can't believe you would disrespect her like this. Things got awkward after that, so I told my friends I'll find a hotel to stay at for the rest of my stay. They all burst out laughing saying things like gotcha, and asked if it was because B's husband came on to me. I asked how they knew because as long as he kept his distance I wasn't planning to tell B and possibly cause an argument between them. It turns out they were all in on it to prank me. I was furious. It didn't sound like a prank to me, but one of those meaningless tests people do to test each other's loyalty. Things got heated and I left to find a hotel after giving them all a piece of my mind, including B's husband. I got here yesterday evening. One of the other friends called me saying vacation is ruined since B's husband is angry that I called him in a hole in the argument and wants them to leave. She hoped I could apologize. Also, B does this to all her new friends to see how loyal they are because her husband is handsome and a great guy and women want him. I responded with I wish I gave in to this great guy then and hung up. Now that I've calmed down I think maybe I went a little too far with my response. A-I-T-A-A -A edited it to use B short form of her name instead of only the first letter. N-T-A this is manipulation and emotional abuse. You didn't ruin the vacation they did. Please don't hang around with these people anymore. They're toxic and you're better off without them. N-T-A your friend has a weird obsession with power. 
She wants to test her husband and her friends. She makes unreasonable and unpleasant demands and now this apologize for calling me in a whole thing from the husband. How would that even help? He doesn't need an apology from you to get on with his vacation without you. I hope for your sake that was the last time you see any of them. If you were in an episode of Punked, you would have passed with flying colors. N.T. you didn't go too far. You were being manipulated and stressed out for their entertainment, and anyone who pulls a loyalty test, like that you need to have some self-pride and walk away from them, for good, and you did that before, even knowing it was a test. Good for you. Next story. I rent out the bottom half of a duplex to a married couple. Today when I got home from work the husband was standing on his stoop and sort of waved me over. So I went over to his side. Our driveways and entrances are on different sides of the house and asked what was up. He asked if I changed the locks. I said no and I tried my key. It didn't work. This freaked me out and he said he thought his wife did it. So I asked why she would and he said she was mad at him. I called his wife and she picked up. She said she was at work but she would talk to me when she got back. I said she needed to come back with the keys right away. She asked if her husband was there and I said yes. She said not to let him in. I went out and bought new locks. I entered through the basement and unlocked the door for the husband, and he helped me switch out the locks. I explained that the price of the new locks was coming out of their deposit, and he said he understood. I made copies of the keys and gave him a set, and called the wife to tell her she could pick her set up from me and explain about the security deposit. She flipped at me for letting the husband in and giving him the keys. I explained that he is on the lease, and I was fulfilling a legal obligation. She said that was BS and I made a choice and it was a bad one. She called me out for being a woman who doesn't support other women. She said her husband cheated and I was helping him escape the consequences. I said I couldn't get involved in their marriage and reminded her to come pick up her keys. She called me a bitch and hung up. I asked my sister for input and she also said I was an ass for helping out a cheater. I feel like I can't pick sides because I have a legal and moral obligation to abide by the terms of our contract and provide both of them with access to the bottom half of a duplex. Am I in a hole for not supporting other women? NTA. It varies from place to place, but in a lot of places states it is illegal for a tenant to change the locks without the owner's permission. Either way, as you were already thinking, as the landlord it is not your place or responsibility to act as their marriage counselor or referee, and since he's on the lease he is allowed to go in the house. Note. If you don't already have it in your lease the next time you have a tenant sign a lease, include a clause saying that they cannot change the locks without your permission. It's in a lot of places that is the law anyway, but it is good to have it in writing with their signature. N-T-A, he, is on the lease. You do have a legal obligation. If it were something dangerous, she would have called the police and gotten a restraining order. So then you could change the locks and keep him out, rightfully so. Stay out of their marriage, document everything in case she does it again, and so you can charge for the locks. So if in doubt, call the police station for their advice. Non-emergency line as well. NTA. Not only did you have a legal obligation to provide access, but you're also supposed to have a key for access yourself if something happens, aren't you? Angry wife didn't mention anything about it to you, or have a key for you even though she shouldn't have changed the locks in the first place. Next story. This guy and I have been friends since we were five. We dated from elementary into middle school, but we broke up halfway through sixth grade. He was my first boyfriend, but I'm certain we didn't have romantic love for each other, though we did care about each other a lot. Fast forward to our adult years, I, 25F, and him, 25M, ended up having sex a week after New Year's 2024. To be honest, it wasn't great. There was no foreplay, no dirty talk and his main concern was making sure the neighbors didn't hear us, which was a huge turn-off. After that, he left for Canada, and I thought that was the end of our sexual encounters, which I covers perfectly fine with. In July 2024, he texted me to check in and asked if I was single. He had done this before, just to see if I was dating anyone. We were friends who had sex, and I didn't think much of it since he knew where I stood on relationships. Our texting lasted longer than I intended and it became clear he wanted sex again. Despite my reservations from our first encounter, I thought maybe it would be different this time, so I agreed. Since he came back, we've had sex three times, and each time was disappointing. He still worried about the neighbors hearing us. There was no foreplay or dirty talk, and whenever he hit the right spot, he'd switch it up to keep me from moaning too much. It made me just want him to finish quickly and leave. I even gave him head, but he never offered to reciprocate. I suggested 69-ing, 
but he either didn't understand or chose to ignore it. After our last encounter on July 15th, 24, I started making excuses to avoid him. So I've been thinking of a way to kindly tell him, you suck at sex. You don't listen to my needs. It feels like you're just using me to get off, and it's a huge turn off. Please find someone else, or do it yourself, without sounding harsh. Here's what he does during sex. I ask him to go harder. He does for a second, then goes back to his usual routine, which is basically rolling his dick inside me. I ask him to stimulate my clit, and he awkwardly taps it with his fingers, missing the mark every time. I request foreplay like playing with my boobs or pussy, but it's ignored. His routine is simple, touch my nipple a bit, kiss my neck a bit, then enter me until he finishes. I don't know if it's a lack of experience, or if he just doesn't care since we're just sex partners. Either way, I'm done with it. Overall, he's a good guy, and I don't want to hurt his feelings, but I need to end this unsatisfying sexual relationship. Any advice on how to do that kindly without hurting his ego or pride? Update, yesterday I decided to tell him, let's call him Ken, that I didn't want to have sex with him anymore. Since we live in the same area, it was easy to meet up. I messaged him, and he quickly responded. He came over, and we sat down in the living room. I offered him a glass of water, which I never do when he comes over for sex, and he immediately asked, what did you want to talk about? I sat across from him and, taking advice from Reddit and my friends, decided to tell him a mix of the truth and a white lie. I said, Hey, sorry for not replying to your message Friday night, but I want to pause our sexual relationship because I'm seeing someone, and we want to see where things go. Sorry for the late update we were figuring things out. He looked down and said, Nah, it's cool. I was going to tell you we needed to stop too because I'm growing my relationship with God. I got baptized and need to change my ways. This took me by surprise because I knew he had been involved with church in Canada. So he must have gotten baptized before he came back to New York and before we had sex the second, third, and fourth times. I was like, what? And he asked to step out for a minute. While he was outside, I updated some friends, and we all found it amusing. When he came back in, I asked, are you okay? He said yes. I told him it was for the best since we both had reasons to end the sexual relationship, and we said our goodbyes. I thought that was the end of it. About half an hour later he texted, I just have one question for you, hoping it was something trivial like where I got the glass I poured his water in. It was a cute glass. I said, sure, what is it? He replied, what's your honest opinion on my size and performance? I wanted to throw my phone. He knew I didn't enjoy sex with him and wanted confirmation. But why did he care? We weren't going to have sex again, and if he was focusing on God, why ask? So, I replied, anything before God shouldn't matter. Focus on your relationship with God, and don't worry about these minor details. So, but he didn't let it go. He said, I'm not worried, I just wanted your feedback. So at this point I was done caring about his feelings and said, Honestly, sex with you made me want to cry in sadness. You left me completely unsatisfied every time and cared more about the neighbors than my needs. Your performance had me reaching for my dildo and vibrator every single time because you failed to make me come. He replied, LOL, I figured. I ended the conversation with a simple okay because I was so frustrated. He essentially laughed off being bad at sex. What do you all think? It's such a weird reaction. And he knew he was bad. I'm 28M. About three weeks ago, I discovered that my wife of less than a year, Bianca 27F, had been cheating on me. When Bianca and I started dating, she told me she had recently broken up with her ex-boyfriend, whom she had dated for three years, and was currently single. I was also single then and had not dated for two years because my previous relationship left me scarred. Since we both had been hurt from our last relationship, Bianca and I promised to never cheat or do anything that would hurt each other. I knew I would keep to my end of the promise and hoped Bianca would do the same. We dated for two years and some months before we got married. Being with Bianca brought me the most happiness out of all my exes. She was a natural humorist and always had a way of making the people around her smile. The first few months of our marriage were filled with laughter and fun. I always looked forward to being with her. While Bianca was a social media influencer and had her own online store, I worked as a data analyst for a big tech firm in our town. I'll admit that there were days when my job was so demanding that I didn't spend enough time with Bianca as promised. In a month, I would miss our dates twice because I was either overwhelmed with completing a task at the office or completely forgot we were supposed to attend a function together. Each time this happened, I tried to make it up to her, which would settle it. 
her favorite chocolate was Snickers, and gifting her a box of Snickers or a few bars always made her happy. Six months after we married, my company allowed me to work three weeks remotely and one week on site. When this happened, I was glad I could finally spend more time with Bianca since her social media influence was something she did remotely. She was also happy when I told her about my new work schedule, and things started returning to how it was for us. Within the first four weeks I started working remotely, I noticed something off with Bianca. I knew always being on her phone was part of her job as an influencer, but I noticed something else. Every time Bianca was on her phone and I walked close to her, I saw she would quickly change the app she was on and would switch to something else. Even though I wasn't standing next to her, I could tell what she did by her body and finger movements. Aside from that, she became secretive with her laptop, and each time she heard my voice or I walked in her direction, she would close the laptop and pretend she wasn't using it. Everything always happened so fast but she never knew I had been observing her. One day when I couldn't take it anymore, I confronted her about it. She said that I was being ridiculous and that she had nothing to hide from me. That day she was doing something on her laptop, and she even asked me to come and take a look to clear my curiosity. I did, and there was nothing suspicious about it. She even showed me her conversations on all her social media accounts, which were strictly work conversations. In the two years and some months Bianca and I had dated, that was the first she allowed me to read her chats. While we dated we used to have access to each other's phones but I never checked or went through her chats with her clients because I felt it was confidential. I had no reason to even go through them. I trusted her, but after she showed me the conversations by herself, I strongly felt something was amiss. It was very unlike her to show me the activities on her laptop or her phone conversation on her own. Maybe she thought she could mislead me by showing me the conversation she wanted me to see, but I didn't fall for it. I could quickly tell when someone was acting shady, and with all the stories I had read here on Reddit, I couldn't ignore the feeling that Bianca was hiding something from me. Some days passed, and I didn't mention the issue of her being sneaky with her phone and laptop again. I kept watching her to be sure I wasn't making false allegations before taking action. A few days after the confrontation, Bianca had a few of her influencer friends over for a small get-together at our place. We all had a great time together, but Bianca was a bit distracted. Even when everyone was eating, laughing, and having a nice time together, Bianca kept texting someone between meals. It happened numerous times that even her friends noticed. One of them was forced to ask her whom she kept texting. When she looked up and saw everyone's eyes were on her, she dropped her phone on the table, faked a smile, and said it was work-related. And she was done. So no one said anything after that, and we all continued to eat. After the guests were gone and we were cleaning up, Bianca the topic of the client she kept texting all the while during the evening. During the evening. My evening. She said the client wanted her to be his brand ambassador for a skincare product and promote his product for a year. Now, this is a very normal conversation to have with your spouse, but it wasn't normal for us, because Bianca never discussed her clients or what they wanted her to do for them. Regarding our profession, she just did her thing, and I did mine. So, her starting a conversation about her client felt off to me. It was almost like she was trying to give an excuse for her action before I asked her about it. It didn't say much after she did. I only smiled and pretended to be a part of the conversation. Meanwhile, a thousand thoughts were already running through my head. I already knew I wouldn't find anything on her phone or laptop that could show she was cheating on me, as I suspected, but I came up with the idea of listening to her conversation. There's this app that allows you to see what another person is doing on their phone, listen to their conversations, and see their messages. To do this, I had to install the app on my phone and her phone. That way I could listen to her calls and see everyone she chatted with. The reason I was so jumpy to find out if Bianca was cheating on me, even when she didn't act strange around me or change her attitude towards me, was because I had been cheated on in my last relationship. And even though I told Bianca I loved her and believed she wouldn't cheat on me, a part of me was still looking for cheating signs. I consciously read meaning to everything, even when it was normal because I didn't want to ignore the red flags as I did in my previous relationship. After successfully installing the app on both our phones, I started my investigation. Truly, Bianca was always chatting with her clients. But there was someone else she chatted with every day, and she was careful enough to not call him or take his calls whenever I was at home or we were together. Two days after I paired my phone with Bianca's phone, she spoke with him for the first time. And the funny thing was, she had known him for years. He was the same ex-boyfriend she told me she had broken up with. When I listened to their conversations for the first time, it was clear that the guy knew Bianca was married and I worked from home. That evening, Bianca sent me outside to get some groceries because she had forgotten to pick some of them. I was driving to the grocery store when they had that call. He asked Bianca about me and she told him that I had gone to get groceries. She told him that she pretended to forget the groceries on her way back so I would go and get them, and give them enough time to talk on the phone. AP was kind enough to tell her to be careful, so I wouldn't catch her, and Bianca said, Oh, Jackie would never leave me. He loves me too much to leave me. Poor thing. And after she said that, they laughed and continued to talk about how they would meet later that evening. After listening to all of their conversations, I returned home in anger. 
When I got home, Bianca asked why I didn't get the groceries again. I lied that I got a call from the office to come and submit something urgently, and she bought it. By the time I got home, she was already dressed and had her makeup on. She told me she was going to hang out with some of her girlfriends, and would be back before midnight, then kissed me on the cheek like she was being truthful, and left. So soon as she left, I called one of my friends and told him what I had found out. He offered to come with me to the restaurant Bianca and her boyfriend were going to. So when we arrived at the restaurant, we saw Bianca cuddled up with her boyfriend while he was trying to feed her. I just walked up to her, ensured that she saw me, and I walked out of the restaurant. Everything happened so fast, and her facial expression showed she was shocked to see me there with my friend. So immediately I walked out of her, she got up from her table and followed me. At first, she wanted to pretend she hadn't done anything wrong, but when she saw my friend recording her, she knew she had been busted. As I expected, she came up with an excuse that she had come to meet with her client, and that it wasn't what it looked like, but I didn't say a word to her. So my friend and I drove back home, and Bianca arrived shortly after we got home. She came into the house and tried to talk to me, but I was more focused on picking my clothes. We jointly rented the apartment, so I couldn't kick her out even if I wanted to. Instead, I took the stuff I needed and left with my friend that night. Since that night Bianca has been sending me multiple messages and calling me repeatedly. After weeks of not taking her calls, she sent voice notes of yet another series of lies. She said that her ex-boyfriend, whom she was cheating with, wanted to connect her with a big client hence she went to meet him. But somehow she felt cold because of the tiny strap gown she wore, and he tried to cover her. This was supposed to explain why they were cuddling each other, and she thought I would buy it. Until now she doesn't know that I paired our phones and I still see the conversation between them. Just three days ago, I made a recent discovery. There's a contract that Bianca has been doing for more than two months now where the pay is great. Her AP was one of the employees of the brand which she was promoting. This means there was an iota of truth in what she said. I also found out they have been badmouthing their company's products. I guess their love rekindled when he came back into the picture. Now the thing is, I'm so sure Bianca is not supposed to be involved with any of the company's staff or badmouthing the company. If the organization finds out, her contract will be terminated and her image will be tarnished. Regarding the video my friend made, I haven't posted it online as intended because I have mixed feelings about it. For the past years Bianca has maintained an excellent public image, and even though she gets dragged online by some of her annoying fans, she has not had any serious issues with the brand she influences. Right now I'm going through so much emotionally, and I want to repay her for using me like that. I intend to leak the conversation between Bianca and her boyfriend and the video of them together. I hope no one will try to advise me against my plans because my mind is already made up. Most times, I wonder why people get married in the first place because a lot of women are not worth the sacrifices we, men, make for them. In Bianca's case, I thought we would build a family together, but it turned out she's just like every other woman out there who wants to eat her cake and have it. Update 1. Hello everyone. Thank you for your comments. It's sad that I am only finding out from your comments that influencers have a high infidelity rate. I married Bianca because she looked like she was the one. Besides that, I fell in love with her personality, not her profession and we dated for almost three years. Also, I took my time with her before we married to get to know her well, and I thought I knew her well enough before marrying. She told me she had cut off ties with her ex-boyfriend and would never have anything to do with him again, even if he were the last man on earth. Her words. I guess I was dumb to fall for her words. My only joy is that I took action immediately after I started suspecting her. Maybe if I still wanted to be the good husband who showers his wife with enough benefits of doubt, I would still be stuck with her now and would be innocently helping her pick the perfect outfit for her girl's night out. So, for my revenge plan, I have posted the video of Bianca and her AP, captured at the restaurant, where they were cozily snuck into each other. The video was not received well by her fans who called her a cheater. I also leaked the conversation between Bianca and her lover where they were badmouthing the brand. The good news is that the company she influenced has terminated their contract with her, and her boyfriend has been fired, too. Also, Bianca and her boyfriend had been saying all forms of bad things about a particular product she was promoting, and they talked about how the company had been ripping people off with their substandard product. So Bianca was forced to make an online apology. She had to take back everything she said, and then had to deal with the company afterward. When this happened, it not only ruined her reputation with the company that fired her, but also caused a ripple effect with her other contract. Other brands had to end their contract with her because of how her video and chat spread like wildfire. Because of this, she was literally left with nothing at the end of it all. As if ruining her influencer reputation was not enough, the headlines carried her name about the video of her cheating on her husband. It was so satisfying to have friends call and ask if what they saw online was true and I assured them that it was. Also, before I shared the video and conversation online, I sent it to her parents. So I told them it was officially over between Bianca and me. I also said some stings about Bianca, and how she was a disgrace to herself and womanhood. Then I blocked both of their numbers from calling. Two days ago, Bianca showed up at my office and created a scene. I told security I wouldn't see her, 
but she refused to leave. She wasn't even allowed into the building, but she kept yelling my name and was kicked off the property. Serves her right. Since the evening I moved out of the house, I haven't seen her face to face. I had only been following her on Facebook and Instagram to see how messed up everything had been for her. Thank you everyone for your kind suggestions and advice. I will make another update soon. Update 2. Hello everyone. Thank you for your comments. It's been a week and some days since I made the last update, and I wanted to wait till after the divorce was settled, but something happened yesterday, and I want to share it. Bianca found out that I was the one who leaked the conversation and video online. Maybe her parents told her, but I'm not sure. She was livid when she came to my friend's house, where I was crashing after leaving my apartment. But when Bianca came she started yelling that I had ruined her life and promised she would destroy mine too. She said so many horrible things. One of them was that she regretted marrying me, and claimed she didn't know what she saw in a low life like me to marry me. She said many rude things and became violent when she saw my friend recording her again. And because of her anger, she picked up a huge stone from my friend's lawn, and threw it at the window from where my friend was recording her. So the stone cracked the window and my friend's phone fell while he hurried to pull his hand inside the house. So I was so furious and went outside to confront her. In the process of us at each other, she brought out a small pen knife and slashed all four tires of my car in my presence. Then she used the knife tip to scratch a long line from the front door to the back door and said, Well, how do you like your new car? Then she left. I have never been so angry in my life. Right now I cannot move my car unless one change all four tires. And I cannot drive the car around with a long scratch mark. So my friend insisted that I sue her in court, and he had everything recorded from inside the house. He will also be suing her for the damage to his window, and he isn't even joking about it. I have decided to sue Bianca because I cannot let her get away with the damage she did. She will pay every penny it costs to replace all tires and spray slash paint my car. Concerning her social media presence, she has been very quiet lately. The rave about her infidelity and bad-mouthing the brand she was promoting has gone down, but she has not been making her Instagram live videos and other things she used to do. I also forgot to mention that many people unfollowed her mainly because of the video. People commented that they used to envy our marriage and how she painted us to be perfect couples online. They even found it difficult to believe she would do such a thing in our first year of marriage, which was meant to be our honeymoon phase. Anyway, what has happened has happened. I cannot condone infidelity just to look perfect in the eyes of people I don't even know. I will make another update once everything has been settled. Thank you for your time. Update 3 Hello everyone. I know it has been a while since I made my last update. I had to wait for everything to be finalized before posting again. Thank you for your patience. Meanwhile, I appreciate your support in me suing Bianca for the damages she made. I am overjoyed as I make this update because everything happened just how I wanted it. My friend and I sued Bianca for damages, and the court ruled in our favor. Can you all believe Bianca tried to deny shattering my friend's window and slashing my tires? She said I was jealous because she left me for her ex-boyfriend, and I slashed the tires to frame her. She didn't even remember that she was being recorded by my friend, and all the evidence we needed was in that video. We told the judge we had a video of her slashing my tires, and the judge asked to see it. When the judge found out that she was lying, she was angry. She asked for an estimate of what it would cost to replace all four tires and spray that part of my car and I showed it to her. I followed your suggestions and checked for the cost of everything plus workmanship. The judge gladly asked her to pay for them. That same day she had a case with my friend. The judge didn't let her lie or defend herself, because she had seen the video of Bianca being violent and throwing the stone at my friend's window. She also ruled in my friend's favor, and Bianca was pissed. I enjoyed looking at her angry facial expression. I was thinking her dear boyfriend would be around to support her, but he didn't show up. Two weeks after the court case, the divorce papers were ready and I had the lawyer send them to her. She didn't even waste time signing them, and we concluded everything. Watching her play victim in the circumstance she created for herself was funny. I'm now happy to announce that Bianca is officially a part of my past. Unlike her, who goes back on her words, I'll never have anything to do with her again. I have blocked her contact on all mutual social media platforms. Now on to the next story. Story 2. Discovered my wife was cheating and my son wasn't mine, so I got revenge by exposing everything. I, 34, recently divorced my ex-wife, 29F, because she cheated on me and destroyed everything we struggled to build together. I met my wife at a bar for a friend's birthday. It wasn't like went there to relax. We attended my friend's birthday hangout, and she only tagged along with her friend, who knew the celebrant. At the hangout we got along well, and I liked her. After the party we exchanged contacts, and I offered to give her and her friend a ride home. From that night we became close and chatted occasionally online. During the first few months, I knew her. We didn't see each other because I had a girlfriend then, and my wife and I were only friends. But after my ex-girlfriend broke up with me, my wife and I became close, and in no time, we were inseparable. We ended up dating for two years plus, and we married. In the first year of our marriage, everything was beautiful and pleasing. But we both worked hard and tried our best to keep everything rolling, but in the second year of our marriage, my wife had to stop working because she became pregnant, 
and her pregnancy had a lot of complications. The complications were so much that I feared the child would not make it, but thankfully, she gave birth to a healthy baby. Throughout the time she stayed home to rest, I worked morning and night to ensure I raised enough money to pay the bills and take care of other necessary things, including getting baby stuff. Fast forward to after she gave birth, my wife insisted that she remain home to nurse the baby for six months before she resumed work. Even though this meant more responsibility on my shoulder, I agreed to it. I did all of this because I loved my wife and the baby and did not want her to feel uncomfortable. I sacrificed so much, believing that I was making life easier for my wife, but I was only fooling myself and working hard for nothing. Most people say that when their wives cheat, they are always cues, but even as I share my story, I'm still shocked that my wife could cheat on me under my nose. I will also say I blame myself because I should have been more vigilant, but I didn't see any signs because I trusted her so much and did not think she would cheat on me. It was even more painful that after four years of being married to the woman I thought loved me, I discovered she had been cheating on me from our first year of marriage. The day I found out, I accidentally stumbled upon some intimate voicemails on our home line, and after listening to all of them, I was broken. So broken that I could not stand up from the ground where I sat. At first, when I heard her voice, I thought there were messages she had left her office, since they went way back. Aside from recognizing her voice, I also recognized our next-door neighbor's voice, and the shocking part was he was a pastor and was flirting with my wife. He is the kind of religious church pastor who talks to everyone he meets about God and the rest. He'd even make you feel like some sinner if you didn't listen to him this was his personality. If I say hearing the intimate voicemails between him and my wife came as a shock, it's an understatement. Another shocking thing was that they kept mentioning my son's name in their conversations, and this neighbor of mine asked after my son almost every time he sent a voicemail, and I had a stomach-churning feeling that there was something I didn't know about. By this time, my son was almost three years old, and all the thoughts of me not being his biological father crossed my mind. So, I secretly conducted a paternity test that same week, and when the results came out, I was shattered. We were not a match. It felt like a bad dream, and I wanted to wake up, but I couldn't because it was reality. Meanwhile, my attitude towards my wife had totally changed. I was literally like a ticking time bomb waiting to explode, and I wanted to confront her and kick her and her baby out of the house, but I came up with a better plan. A plan that would publicly humiliate her and bring her infidelity to the limelight. Four days after I got the paternity test results, I lied to my wife that I had been promoted at the office, and she was so excited. So, to mark my promotion, I suggested that we throw a small party and invite our close neighbors, her parents, and my parents to come and celebrate with me, and she agreed. We made the necessary preparations, and I invited the neighbors myself, including her affair partner. On D-Day, two days after, her parents and my parents came as I had invited them, and her affair partner with his wife and daughter came too. To mock him, I asked him to do an opening prayer for our party, and he did that with glee. I had already collected evidence of their affair, including phone records and voicemail transcripts. The party started on a good note, and everyone who came congratulated me for the promotion, lol. While everyone was drinking and gisting, I asked the DJ I hired to change the song to my preferred song, and I paid him extra to keep it playing no matter how everyone reacted. My preferred song was a compilation of all the voicemails between my wife and my neighbor. When the audio started nobody understood what was happening until my wife recognized her voice, and her app recognized his voice. Not just that, a P's wife recognized her husband's voice, and all hell broke loose. She created a scene and hit him continuously in the presence of everyone, and he could not even defend himself. On the other hand, my wife's face turned pale as she froze. While the whole drama between App and his wife was going on, I called everyone's attention and told them my wife had something important to tell me and her family, and she was confused. Her eyes were already filled with tears, and she could not even look her disappointed parents in the eye. When I told her to go ahead and tell everyone who her son's biological father was, her eyes widened, and she started stuttering. At that point, everyone was quiet, and everyone's eyes were on my wife, including App's wife. So at this point I was so mad and could not contain my anger anymore. I yelled at her, and she hesitated. She mentioned her app's name, and everyone gasped. App's wife fell to the ground in disbelief, and people had to rush to her. So the same time my wife went on her knees and told me she could explain. She said something about her app coming over to preach to her on a particular day, and it happened. So when she found out she was pregnant for him, the only thing she could do was pin the pregnancy on me as her husband. And she didn't tell me because she would hurt my feelings but as time passed, she and her app got close and fell in love. On the other hand, her app wanted to be in his son's life, so she told him she would tell her son who his biological father was when he turned 18. Hearing this even broke me, and people began to yell at her, calling her names for being so cruel. Her parents left shamefully, and I threw her and her son out of the house. It's quite painful that she could actually do that to me after all my years of sacrifices and love. So the irony is I have listened to so many stories of mismatched paternity results on this channel. But I believed my wife was faithful 
and could never do something like that. LOL, so much for trust. Anyways, we divorced. But before we divorced, she got a handful from our neighbors. So the couple of times she had come to beg me to give her another opportunity. My female neighbors would quickly rush their children away from her whenever they saw her like she was some closet monster. As for her app, his wife could not stand the shame, so she divorced. I heard something else happen at his church when members learned about his infidelity and child, but it's not my business. He also moved out of the neighborhood after his marriage because he could not stand the looks of disgust and disappointment from the same neighbors he used to preach to. It's barely a year since this happened, and I'm still healing. I advise every father out there or expecting father to conduct a paternity test at birth, or before birth if you have doubts. This is the worst kind of heartbreak I have ever experienced, and I hope I heal entirely from it. As for relationships, I doubt I'll be in one anytime soon. I'll rather focus on myself and my career, and maybe start a business YouTube channel that I've always wanted to. She must have noticed I was checking her out at the party because she kept looking in my direction. After a lot of internal struggle, I approached her. I wasn't as chubby now, I just had a noticeable weight, which runs in my family, and I've been that way since childhood. In the past, many girls had turned me down, laughed in my face because I tried hitting on them, and I wasn't expecting anything different with Maya. She was gorgeous, and I expected her to either snub me or pretend like I didn't exist, but she was different. She spoke to me politely, and we talked for the rest of the night, and had such a great time. It was my first time feeling that good and confident in a long time, and because we clicked so well, we exchanged contacts and I gave her a call as soon as I got home. From there we started seeing each other often, went on lunch dates, and our friendship grew as time passed. I found Maya to be different from other girls of her age. She was kind, witty, and intelligent, I figured from the first night we talked. I wasn't just attracted to Maya because of her beauty. What attracted me most to Maya was her intelligence and sense of humor. Not so many girls had given me the opportunity to go on multiple dates with them, but Maya was generous to give me a shot. I was always attracted to intelligent people. I didn't like being around people with no life goals, vision, or future plans, and Maya was all of it. She was just out of college, actively scavenging the job openings, rushing for the marathon of interviews and whatnot. I loved to see how serious she was about her career. I never had a real relationship apart from one in high school. Not because I couldn't keep one, but because the girls wanted something more than a nerdy's boy love, which I didn't have. So, meeting and dating a girl like Maya felt like a win for me. It was three months since she had graduated, and she had no luck in the job hunting game. She had left the college dorm and shifted with her friend, but it was becoming difficult for her to survive. So her parents were not well off to support her post-graduation. They had made it clear to her that she needed to care for herself after graduation. The friend with whom Maya lived was very clumsy and would often have a boyfriend at the house. Since it was a one-bedroom flat, it became difficult for Maya to live in that house. Maya said living at her friend's place was taking its toll on her mental health so I asked her to take a break for a while and move in with me. Although I was just starting my career in tech, the pay was good. I earned enough to care for both of us without her contribution. We lived in a spacious one-bedroom apartment, and I single-handedly took care of rent, paid the bills, and took care of groceries. I never complained because I loved her and didn't see a big deal in spending some extra bucks on her. Blind love, yeah, throughout our relationship, everything went on smoothly, and we barely had any major fights. Amaya managed the house, did the dishes and laundry, went grocery shopping, and took care of my bed needs. She was so great in bed, and I enjoyed every bit of the moment with her. Before Maya and I started dating, she told me about her ex-boyfriend in college and how he maltreated her. I assured her I was a gentleman, and I kept my promise. In the past, I had never had issues controlling my anger, and I never laid my hands on anybody or a woman, so she was safe with me. So leave it or not, I had never cheated in the past, and I didn't plan on cheating on her. Also, my work was 60% remote and 40% on site, so I shuffled our house in the office, and this allowed us to spend enough time together. To show how transparent I was with her, I even came up with the rules of telling each other wherever we went, who we were with, and what we were doing whenever we went out. I did this to show her I meant serious business with her, and that I had nothing to hide. As our relationship progressed, we introduced each other to our parents, and in no time, we knew all of each other's friends, mainly those close to us. I didn't have a best friend, but Maya had. Her name was Andrea, and she used to hang out with Maya all the time. She also visited the house regularly, and we were almost like family. Andrea and Maya were roommates back at college. Unlike Maya, Andrea worked as a retail store manager at a popular store in our city, and lived with her two sisters, who were also working women. So as per Andrea, Maya was able to crack the job for the same supermarket, but Maya declined the offer because she wanted a corporate job. I guess she became very comfortable with me providing for her, although I didn't say this to her. Andrea would often tease her and call her spoiled. Maya claimed she had worked hard, juggling many part-time jobs as a teenager and while in college, so she deserved to be relaxed and cared for. On my end, I have happy to give her that break, 
I didn't have any issues with taking care of Maya. In fact, I was glad I could provide and take care of my woman. One evening, while we were at a fancy restaurant to celebrate my promotion, Maya suddenly asked, What do you say if we get married? Um, I stuttered. I was taken aback for a moment, but it didn't totally come as a surprise. I had been thinking of settling down with her, but I still had a lot of things under consideration. So I told her we would be married when the time was right, and she smiled. To be honest, I wanted Maya to start her career before we took our relationship to the next level. I always wanted to get married and have a family. After Maya came into my life, I've always imagined my life with her. I had even bought the ring to propose to her but was waiting for her to get her career straight. So, But somehow she found the ring in my closet, and before she could make any assumptions, I had to make an early proposal. The first time Maya broke the news to her best friend, Andrea, she looked more shocked than happy. Not the kind of shock that her best friend was getting married, but the shock that her best friend was getting married to me. So I expected more excitement from her, especially since she would be Maya's maid of honor, but the excitement did not come. Her response was, are you being serious? Andrea then tossed her purse on the floor and held Maya's ring. Then she looked up at me and forced a smile. Trust me, I had been around them for a very long time, and I could tell when her smile was forced and when it was genuine. Although I didn't mention it to Maya, I felt Andrea was not happy for her friend. In the past, I noticed Andrea was always awfully nice to me. Once we three were hanging out in our apartment, while Maya went inside the kitchen to prepare some quick snacks, Andrea hinted to me that Maya was not who I thought she was. I understood what she meant, but I played dumb. I asked her what did she mean. Andrea said that I would figure it out eventually. She was drunk. Calm. Sides, she did not pass a direct message, and I could not conclude based on that. In no time, we started planning our wedding. Maya wanted a big fat wedding, the kind she would invite all her friends, family, and frenemies, but that was not what I wanted. First, it was significantly above my budget since she would not be contributing a penny to it. Secondly, I believed there was life after a wedding. I loved kids, and I wanted us to have a child almost immediately, and that meant we'd need to rent a bigger apartment and take care of other things. So though Maya had all the reasons to want a big wedding, I still kicked against it. She mentioned something about having the perfect expensive wedding, but we both knew it was impossible. Surprisingly, Maya got a job a couple of months before our wedding. I told her I could not afford to buy the brand of wedding gown she needed and pay for her bridesmaids' dresses, so she figured it was better to get a job and handle most of her bills instead of bugging me. Her wise decision impressed me, and I hoped she would keep up with her career after we married. Also, I expected she would contribute to our wedding plans with her new job in the picture, but she didn't. Everything she earned was channeled to her gown, shoes, accessories, and everything her bridesmaids needed, so I ended up paying for the wedding venue, hall, cakes, and almost everything on my own. Two weeks before our wedding, I noticed that Andrea began to text me more and more. She'd text me in the morning to ask if I slept well and she'd text me as she went shopping with Andrea. In fact, it was a long list and reasons to text me, but whenever we met or she came to our house to help Maya with something, she would remain calm so Maya would not suspect anything was off between us. At one point, I had to tell Andrea to stop calling and texting me because it was getting out of hand. I was afraid that it might jeopardize my relationship with Maya. I was too afraid to mention it to Maya because I didn't want it to ruin their friendship or wedding preparation. I knew how much she loved and trusted Andrea, and deep down, I believed Andrea was trying to seduce me or get me to change my mind about marrying her best friend. On the night of Maya's bachelorette party, I understood why. I was in the club section of the hotel we were all lodging at a day before our wedding. So I was drinking with some of my friends when Andrea called me and said there was something she wanted to show me. At first I didn't want to go because I believed she wanted to seduce me one last time. But when she mentioned Maya and a familiar name, I took one of my friends and went upstairs. When I got to the hotel room they were using for their small party, I saw Andrea outside the door waiting for me. She told me something I could not believe and when I opened the door my heart nearly fell into my stomach. So before I opened the door, I heard soft moans from their room, and my chest constricted as I touched the door's handle. To my greatest shock, I saw Maya on top of another man, which I suspected was the male stripper they hired to entertain them. The moment she saw me, she jumped off him and struggled to cover herself with the sheets. So almost instantly I recognized him. As Andrea had told me, he was her college ex-boyfriend, and I didn't even know when I started crying. It was too much to handle, and I walked out of them without saying a word. My friend who had escorted me upstairs was also mortified. Tiboso, Istabite. He tried to talk to me or maybe calm me down, but I shrugged him off and walked out. As I walked down the corridor, I heard Maya yelling at Andrea, Why would you do this to me? My life was going perfectly, but you ruined it, Andrea yelled back. I told you he deserved better. Rick has been nothing but good to you. I told you to break up with that loser boyfriend of yours and be with Rick, but you wanted to eat your cake and have it. I didn't bother to look back. I could not believe Maya had been playing me the whole time. It was too painful to accept, and I wished I could handle the hurt I felt, but I couldn't. Andrea even tried to follow me. I slammed the door in her face. 
I drank until I could not differentiate between a shadow and an actual person. The following morning I woke up to a ton of missed calls from Maya and some other people. So when I left the room Maya was already wearing her wedding gown. She looked so miserable. The moment she saw me, she ran to me and asked why I wasn't dressed for our wedding and hearing that made me so furious. Out of anger I pushed her away and announced I was calling off our wedding. Everyone was shocked and have kept asking why I changed my mind. Even my parents were shocked to see me in that state because no one expected this to come after all the money I had spent on the preparations, but I was too heartbroken to speak. So I stared at Maya with blood boiling down my spine. I went back into my room and locked myself. From inside the room I could hear my parents and some of our friends asking Maya about the reason behind my decision but she didn't respond. She just pretended to faint and a couple of people caught her before her body touched the floor. After cleaning up from the previous night I left the hotel room with a few belongings I had taken there. I switched off my phone after I dropped an apology message on my friend's WhatsApp group chat and switched off my phone. Please don't blame me I didn't know how else to react. It's been a week since then and I still don't know how to come to a term that I was being played on. Update 1, hi everyone. Thank you for your comments. It means so much to me. Some of you commented in my original post about why I didn't do the background check with my friend's sister before dating Maya. So the thing was, I was stupid. I did not feel the need to do it aggressively. However, I remember subtly asking my friend's sister about Maya during the initial dating phase. She responded that they both were in different apartments, and Maya was her friend's and after college, they were not in touch, so it didn't help much. Speaking of Maya, I met her yesterday, and she was so mad at me for standing her up at our wedding. It's kind of funny, right? She ignored what she did and made me the villain in this story. She told her parents I canceled the wedding because I had drunk too much the previous night and I wasn't in my right senses. I think she is mistaking my quietness for foolishness. I didn't want anything to do with her anymore, and I didn't understand why she thought we both could be a thing again. To make things worse, she admitted that she was still having an affair with ex-boyfriend when we were dating, which broke me more. She did so because I was always working, and I didn't give her the kind of attention she needed. Right now I am so confused I never neglected Maya or turned down any of her needs. She was also why I always worked so hard, I could take care of our bills and still care for her. Even as I type this, the thought of her sleeping with her boyfriend behind my back still hunts me. And right now she's asking us to fix another wedding date, because she cannot bear the embarrassment. To think that she only apologized once about how she had hurt me, shows that she never loved or valued me as much as I loved her. It was more of a one-person thing. I've told her I cannot marry her. I just cannot. So meanwhile I kicked her out of my house and changed my locks. After I met with Maya yesterday, I also met Andrea to thank her for helping me dodge a bullet. It was through Andrea that I knew Maya had been getting money from me to take care of her boyfriend, and any time she asked for a ridiculous amount to buy something, she gave it to him. Also I never mentioned that Maya went to the gym every evening while we lived together, she was just obsessed with being fit, and I didn't think something was wrong with that. Well, I just found out that she was meeting with her college boyfriend every day, and most of the time, she said she was with Andrea, but she wasn't. She only asked Andrea to cover up for her. And the reason Andrea was so shocked when Maya showed her the engagement ring was because, a couple of days earlier, she had told Andrea she wanted to settle down with her college boyfriend because she was deeply in love with him. Now I understand why Andrea wouldn't stop texting and calling. She was looking for a way to tell me what was happening, but I didn't give her the opportunity. Sometimes, I feel I deserve this because I was so stupid that I got trapped so easily. So I've made up my mind, and there won't be another wedding. I will be meeting her again in two days to trash her belongings. I will make another update soon. Update 2 Hello, everyone. Sorry for the delay in updating. I met Maya again the second time three weeks ago, and something unexpected happened. Meanwhile, when I told her we would never be together again, talk more about getting married, she looked me in the eye and said, Do you think calling off our wedding will help you find a better woman? LOL, no woman in her right mind would want to be with an overweight man like you. You should consider yourself lucky to marry a woman like me. In my entire life, I had never been insulted like that, and it hurt so much that it came from someone I once loved, or someone who claimed she loved me. At that point I knew the kind of person she was. Although it's hard to admit, I realized she had been using me the whole time. I know I'm overweight, but I didn't want to where my wife felt like she was doing me a favor. I knew how those kinds of marriages always turn out to be. We didn't talk much that day because she threw my engagement ring on me and walked out in anger. I blocked her on all our mutual social media platforms and even her number. But, before I blocked her parents from calling me, I visited them and told them how much a whore their daughter was, and they were so disappointed when they found out the truth. Oh, about a week later, after Maya walked out on me at the cafe, a strange number began to call me repeatedly. When I picked it up, I immediately recognized Maya's voice. She sounded different, calmer, and more respectful. Without beating around the bush, she asked if we could meet because she had something important to tell me but I insisted she say it over the phone. But before she said it, she started apologizing. 
She asked me to forgive and forget everything that happened between us in the past, so we could start on a fresh slate. Guess what? Maya said she wanted to tell me she was pregnant, and I found that really odd. So and without waiting for me to say another word, she added, I'm pregnant with your baby, Rick, and I busted into a loud laugh. So I told her it wasn't April Fool's yet, and she was already pulling pranks. Then I ended the call on her. And like I expected, she didn't stop calling, so I was forced to block the number too. It turned out that her boyfriend had abandoned her after he knew she could no longer take care of him, and when she broke the news of the pregnancy to him. So when it didn't work, she thought she could pull a fast one on me. Since then she has been trying to call me with strange numbers, and I kept rejecting them. Just two days ago she showed up at my house uninvited. Andrea was there with me. So when she saw Andrea, she attacked her with her filthy words, calling Andrea a whore who destroyed her best friend's life. She even accused me and Andrea of having an affair and cheating on her. I had to call the police on her. And yesterday I filed a restraining order for her. Orsdi, ad puntishans pompot orant under yeb patoid of azir mekorns up an autofors me essence, she is spirited on skaplight of atorlan. I can only imagine how miserable her life would be without a job and someone to help her raise the baby. As for Andrea and I, there's nothing between us, and I don't think we'll ever be a thing. She shows up sometimes to check on me. Right now I just want to have my life fixed, and hopefully, this broken heart of mine will heal one day. While I still cannot forgive her for what she did to me, I guess she got what she deserved. I'm still trying to heal and move on. Any advice would be highly appreciated. Thanks. Now on to the next story. Story 2. I-25M was planning to propose to my girlfriend, 26F, but she admitted after a night out that she cheated on me and is begging for forgiveness. How do I go about this? I've known my girlfriend since we were in kindergarten. She's helped me through thick and thin. Through periods of depression when my parents were being abusive when I lost my grandparents through it all. She's genuinely my hero. She's also so warm-hearted, caring, selfless, and the best person I know. About a month ago, I told her parents and mine that I wanted to marry her, and we agreed to rent out our favorite amusement park where I would propose to her, which is also where I confess my love to her. It is still rented for 29th August. It was all so perfect, until yesterday, my girlfriend said that she's going to a karaoke event with her female friends. At 2 a.m. today, she returned, clearly drunk, and collapsed in bed. This morning, she woke up in tears and apologized profusely. After she'd calmed down, she explained that she was drunk and decided to have sex with another man at the party after the karaoke and regretted it afterwards a lot. When I asked why she'd do this, she said that she was so drunk that she completely blanked on the fact that she was in a relationship with me. So that sounded to me like she would have sex with other men if she wasn't with me. So I asked if she was unhappy in bed. But she reassured me that that's not the case, and couldn't ask for anything more from me and regrets everything she did. I had so many more questions that I wanted to ask, but my heart completely broke and I began crying. She hugged me and said that she would do anything to get my trust back and constantly ask not to break up over this. I said that I need some time to think and went into a separate room. I have now been sitting in this room heartbroken for many hours now, and don't know what to do. She said that she'd do anything to get my trust back, so I have hoped that there's something I can change to ensure that she never cheats on me again like always going with her when she goes outside, but that feels really controlling and disgusting to me. Is there any way to not break up and still have trust again that she will never cheat on me again? If I do break up though I don't think I can ever love anyone like her again. Please try to understand and comprehend that I've known her since not long after I was even born. We were often in the same class, doing the same school work together, playing together, eating together, doing everything together. I spent many years trying to confess my love, We've spent many years living, loving, smiling together. She feels like a part of me by now. How can I just throw that part away and pretend I'll be fine? I'm saying this because I know it's common on this subreddit to basically just say move on. But I really don't think that's possible for me. So I'm really looking for responses that suggest how we can stay together with rules to ensure that this never happens again. I would also like to hear suggestions about whether I tell mine and or her parents of the incident. I'll have to tell them to cancel the amusement park event, so I probably will have to tell them what happened, but I could excuse the cancellation as me not feeling quite ready yet or something. I'm mainly considering this because I don't want her parents to be mad slash yell at her or be cold towards her. Because as I explained before, she's always been my hero and I don't want someone who's helped me so much get hurt, especially because I've experienced how much that hurts. Update 1, the title is probably a good enough summary to let you read this post without lacking much information anyway, so here's the update. A day after the post, I decided to ask for clarification as to what exactly happened, so I was mentally prepared for every possible response, except the one she gave me. From all of the information she gave me, I have tried organizing the most important information below. Before the karaoke, the boyfriend of one of her friends, whom I'm acquainted with but not particularly close with, decided to join last minute. So let's call him Richard. During the karaoke her female friends kept daring her to chug beers. She told them to stop daring her after three drinks, but they kept insisting, 
and making her feel bad by saying stuff like you never drink much anyway. So just for today, try to have some fun and stop ruining the moment and other stuff. So she continued, can confirm that my girlfriend normally drinks far less, two beers max normally. She says that she remembers drinking 10 beers in about an hour. She says it's likely she drank more after that, but doesn't remember anything after the 10 drinks, except waking up back home. She says that the drinks very likely made her blackout drunk. In my original post I didn't provide much detail about when she returned from karaoke due to the word limit on posts and me not thinking that the information would matter much. Autumn and auto be information would matter much. Speak her counseling writings at Bob Spethy enough. Regardless, the day she returned, her female friends were carrying her by her shoulders and I had to also carry her to her bed. Her legs were barely moving, her body was not holding upright, and she wasn't able to form coherent sentences. So although until then, I did not have any experience with a person who blacked out, I can only imagine that her situation was a blackout. So I do also believe that she got blackout drunk. When she woke up she had 10 missed calls from her friends. She called back, her friends explained what happened while she was blackout drunk. During the karaoke, Richard said that he needed to talk to her, my geef, for a moment to strategize on how they'd sing as partners. The friends decided to continue the karaoke while Richard and my geef strategized. Zambando. After half an hour neither Richard or my geef were back, so they started checking for where they were. Richard wasn't picking any calls. After an unknown amount of time, Richard's geef saw Richard having sex with my geef. Of course, Richard and his geef broke up, and then all of the females brought my geef home. After finding out about this, my geef was mad and shouted how dare he rape me. I was in the basement before I saw my geef cry, which is why I didn't hear this, but her friends said, he's saying she consented. My geef says that she was speechless and hung up because she couldn't believe she consented to that and started crying because she believed that she cheated on me by consenting and thought our relationship was over. She didn't know that legally. If a person is drunk, consent or not, you cannot have sex with them. I was surprised she thought this, because even if you don't know the laws on this, how could it possibly be morally, or even solely logically speaking fine to ask for someone's consent when they're barely able to communicate or think? I was really shocked by this story and started feeling really bad for my geef. I explained to her that this is rape, not consensual sex. So I hugged her and tried to comfort her and asked if she needed anything and how she was feeling. She said that because she doesn't even remember anything after the drinks. She doesn't feel any of the responses normally felt after rape, like trauma. She said that she's mainly disgusted by Richard but also mad at herself for losing control so easily because of a dare and hurting me like this. So we went to the police station to report this. The investigation is still ongoing. Also, to be honest, I was still a little suspicious that the story could have been made up or misconstrued. So I went to the karaoke place that they went to and explained the situation and asked if I could see the camera's footage. They agreed, and there was footage of the exact situation that I was told playing out. There was also footage of Richard asking my GF sex, and my GF responding in a very drunk and barely audible voice I like. That bastard really thought that was consent. I have of course also provided this footage to the police. Although the police's investigation has not concluded, the evidence I saw is in my opinion enough for me to believe her. So my GF volunteered to explain the situation to both of our parents, because she wants to take accountability for her actions. Her parents were very apologetic and sweet about the situation which I appreciated a lot. My parents brought us both together to make sure that all of us were on the same page, and we had a big group hug, and my dad said something that really resonated with me. This situation is really shitty for everyone, but I know that love will prevail in the end. Unfortunately, it was too late to go back on the we rented that day, so we, me, my parents, her parents, agreed to proceed with it, but without the proposal, and invited a bunch more people. I told both mine and her parents that I would decide when the time is right to tell her that we initially rented that amusement park to propose. I told her about a week ago when things were more back to normal and her feelings seemed very complicated as one would expect. But I think her summary of her emotions being devastated but understanding is pretty good. Thanks to the advice of many Redditors, we have decided to take therapy, which has been really helpful in helping us understand each other and get even closer. She proposed herself that she never wanted to drink alcohol again. She said that it never even tasted that good anyway, and never made me happy in the long term. Ah, she said that she mainly just drinks to fit in, but now plans to stop. So far that goal has been going great. We also realize that we both always want to do events like Karawak together, but sometimes worry about bothering the other. Even on the day that she went with her friends, she wanted to go with me, but thought that I looked busy, so went alone. I was not busy. We have worked hard at being more communicative and expressing our feelings more, and it has seriously been great. I have also told her about my Reddit post. I want to thank everyone for all of the advice, even if it was a little mean. We are both so happy right now and I have faith that despite this bump in the road, we'll keep riding this car forever.